made me spend money. Oh, I hate this perfume. <laughs> it's very bright and happy and fun. Hello everyone, my name is Reno. Welcome or welcome back to this channel. This is my video series here on YouTube where I share to everyone my love for fragrances. Today's video is all about the fragrance haul that I just did. But first and foremost, let me excuse the energy. If it's a little low today because I am recovering from flu, but I'm just so excited to do this video because this is my very first fragrance haul. Something that you're not gonna see a lot in this channel. The store that was having a warehouse sale, it was a Libertine Perfumery, which is a famous niche perfume retailer here in Australia. Over the last three days, they were having warehouse sales, 75% off in different brands. Now, I personally focused on the shelf, on the two shelves that were, you can either buy one bottle for $100, or you can buy three for $250. There was also one special rack that had, I think, um, some Parfums de Marly. They definitely had Velaya and Delina there. Um, some Amouage perfumes. Um, what else was there? But yeah, there was one special rack where you can buy uh, one bottle for $300. Oh yeah, they also had Creed. They had Aventus, Aventus Cologne. Um, uh, what's that creed that with a red label? They had a couple of uh, the, the women's perfume, spring flowers, white, love in white, but those were $300. I wanted to buy it, but I wanted to invest on the three for $250. So I have six bottles here. So if you do the math, I literally spent $500 Australian dollars this weekend for these perfumes, but I think they're very much worth it. I didn't have high hopes with this warehouse sale because they didn't post um, what you can expect inside when you get there. And phones, phones were allowed. You're just not allowed to take photos and videos inside the uh, where they were doing the warehouse sale. So we didn't really know um, what to expect. But here's a sneaky secret. I am in this fragrance lovers fragrance enthusiast Facebook group and someone who went to this warehouse sale secretly took a video of one of the racks and I have caught my eye on this bottle right here. This is Floris number 007 and this is an iconic perfume from Floris and I have told myself that if I didn't like anything else in the warehouse sale, I am not going to go out of there without a bottle of this one right here. Most of them, by the way, don't have boxes. Some of the juice boxes, some of the creeds and Parfums de Marly comes in full presentation, sealed in a box, you know, that kind of stuff. But most of them don't have boxes, just like this one. And this was the one perfume that I saw in that sneaky video that was taken from the inside that I knew that I definitely need to get. I've always wanted my own bottle of this one. And this is the first perfume that we are going to talk about. I haven't smelled this perfume before, but I've always really wanted to um, have my own bottle of this. Regardless if I may not like what this smells like, but I kind of like just trusted my guts and trusted the brand. Being Floris, being the heritage brand that they are. So this perfume smells really masculine and I've always known that this perfume would have a touch of vintage to it, especially with the prominent use of uh, geranium and carnation in this perfume. But this perfume just smells really classy, really masculine, um, but not in a rough way. It smells very British. It smells very posh. It smells very confident. It smells very... There's something about this perfume that you can't dress this down. If you are going to wear this casually, you're going to have to wear something that is, you know, button down or a light jacket over it. And even though it has elements of vintage perfumes with the use of oak moss, carnation, geranium, this still smells really modern, but in a very classy, sophisticated, you're not driving a luxury car. The person wearing this perfume doesn't drive a luxury car. He's the one being driven. He's, he's in the back seat. Someone else is driving the car for him. This is that kind of image that this perfume 
is giving me. Really beautiful and I'm so happy I have, I finally have this in my collection. Now, by the way, there were tons, tons of perfumes uh, from Floris in there. I'm not sure if they had Honey Oud, which what I would have wanted to pick. They didn't have some of their famous ones, but they definitely have, I think, 90% of the of Floris perfumes in there. Um, but the second perfume that I fell in love with in there was this one right here. This is Platinum 22, and I have always wanted to have my own bottle of this perfume. I've heard great reviews about this perfume, especially because this perfume, if I'm not mistaken, was released during the Platinum Jubilee of Queen Elizabeth II, I think. It's supposed to be an Irish dominant perfume, and I really fell in love with this perfume in there. Yep. It is in the same vein as Dior Homme. Oh, it's so beautiful, my goodness. It has dark qualities in the background, like some earthy, leathery, like more probably leaning towards Dior Homme Parfum than the Intense. But there is something about this perfume that smells really transparent and classy. When I tried this one in store, instantly this became my number two pick for the three for 250. It's a little smoky, but there's just something about it that it feels very bright and transparent, masculine, and just overall classy. Wow, I love it, I love it. The next perfume that I fell in love with was this one right here from Juice Box. Very beautiful white bottle. It's called Visionary Eye. Now. This is an iris perfume. It was not, I was not planning on getting all the iris perfumes in there. But when I was looking at the, at the shelf and saw many juice box perfumes, I knew I had to get something from juice box because their bottles are cute. Their bottles look nice and funky and, um, you know, whimsical. Is this whimsical? But it's very, it's very fun. It looks very fun. So I knew I had to have one. And I was so surprised to smell this in there because this is Iris. And it just made me so happy smelling this perfume because this is how I imagine Dior Homme Cologne should smell like, you know? It's a very bright and fizzy and just fun. Um, iris perfume. Let me read some of the notes because I wrote it down right here. Where is it? So it's supposed to have bergamot, thyme, lavender, iris, musk, and so on. But my goodness, yes, it is irisy. It's not really Johon like. It doesn't smell like that at all. But if I were to make a Johon cologne. It would smell like this. It's very aromatic from the lavender and the thyme that gives it this beautiful brightness. This is what I imagine Dior Homme if it was made for spring and summer. Not the citrusy Dior Homme Cologne that we all know and love, which I think is really beautiful as well. Not the Givenchy Cologne, which I also have in my collection in the back. This one has a thick iris there but made very bright and transparent and lively and fun because of the thyme and lavender. I, I fell in love with this one instantly um, in the warehouse sale. Looking back at Platinum 22, this I think would be, if I were to make iris perfumes my personality, this would be my special occasion, my formal occasion, my... Uh, red carpet event iris perfume but if i were to wear something irisy for brunch for a daytime date it would be visionary eye from juice box because it really is that beautiful very fun uplifting iris perfume and in my opinion it smells really unisex the harshness of Platinum 22 might turn off some female enthusiasts because like I said, it has some sort of leathery undertone in there. But this one, 
completely unisex, but this is beautiful. I really, really love this. I need to stop talking about this perfume. Now, so the florist perfumes and the juice box perfumes were located in this shelf right here on the right. On the left, this is where you can find this perfume. This is from Orme and this is Livre Blue. On that same shelf, you have obvious parfums, Juliet has a gun, um, and a few others that I was not really interested in. I've always seen this perfume on social media and I've always known that I wanted a bottle just because of the bottle. They have this beautiful, whimsical wooden cap. Different perfumes have different, you know, design for their caps, which I think is really, really fun. And I don't know, it just makes it so special. Everything that I've tried so far wasn't a wow. I almost wanted to get the Toi Toi Toi, if I'm not mistaken, that's what it's called, Toi Toi Toi, uh, because I've heard about it before. I've heard about it um, in some videos in YouTube in the past, but I decided, you know, no, I'm only getting three. I'm okay with three. But, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> when I tried this perfume, this, this was the culprit of why, why I spent $500 in one weekend. I couldn't put this down. I couldn't put this bottle down. Now, I could have just bought this for, you know, paying an extra $100 because I have two fifty dollars for three. You can buy one bottle for $100. But I said to myself, let's do a little math here. $150 more, basically around $75 for each two extra bottles. I would have three more bottles, right? Math. Consumerism math. Make it make sense. So I said to myself, if I'm going to buy this, I might as well just get two more bottles. Because why not? But the reason why I couldn't drop this bottle down, the reason why I had to buy this perfume, I've never smelled anything like this perfume. <laughs> surprise, surprise, this is another Iris perfume. My goodness. Like I said, I wasn't planning on, you know, looking for the whatever Iris perfume that I could find. Some of them definitely caught my eye because I saw Elegis by Santa Maria Novella. I think it was the smaller bottles, that's why I didn't pick it up. But when I smelled this, oh my god, I couldn't drop this bottle. Because this perfume, what struck me the most was that this is the first perfume that I've smelled that has iris and paired with this very chocolatey cacao. This perfume supposedly contains rum, iris, vanilla, benzoin, and cacao. It definitely was giving boozy. It definitely was giving chocolatey without being sweet. It doesn't smell sweet at all. It has a little bit of sweetness in there, but just the right amount. It's very minimal for me. For my taste, it's really minimal, which I love in perfumes. I don't like very sweet perfumes. In my opinion, this is the perfect, the perfect clubbing iris perfume. And now here comes the storyline. <laughs> oh, this is so stupid. This is just stupid storytelling in my head that made me spend money. This is my formal occasion perfume. This is my iris for casual days. And this I think would be a perfect clubbing night out perfume. <sighs> Let's make a separate video for that one. It's so beautiful. It has something leathery in the background, something earthy, but what really dominates for me is the cacao, the chocolatey cacao, and this buttery, lipsticky iris. Dry, buttery, lipsticky iris paired with that chocolatey cacao. It's almost like, um, if you've smelled cocoa powder, it almost has that kind of like texture, but like, you know, molten. It's not, it's not hot chocolate cacao, it's more, the powder, it's probably a little bit buttery and creamy. 
beautiful. <sighs> Made me spend money. Oh, I hate this perfume. <laughs> I actually spent 30 minutes to probably an hour just going around, going around the warehouse, deciding which one of the initial three I should drop so I could add this. Definitely it was either this or one of the three. And I couldn't, I couldn't drop any of the three. I love those three. I love those first three. Platinum 22, 007, Visionary Eye. I couldn't drop them. I couldn't drop them. I said to myself, fine, fine. After an almost an hour, literally, I was sniffing candles in between. I was sniffing hand creams in between. But I still was so decided keeping this one. And then so yeah, finally I decided to keep it. And whatever, add two more perfumes to complete the three for 250. And I said to myself, you know what? If I'm going to spend money here, might as well spend it on a house that's worth spending money on. Flores, Flores, why not go back to Flores? Initially, I wanted to get, oh God, I initially wa I wanted to get uh, German, German Street um, because that's Kit Connors perfume. Kit Connors perfume. The only bottle that's left there didn't have a cap, but only about this juice left inside the bottle. So I thought, that's not worth a hundred dollars. That's not worth $75. Get something else. And I knew, I knew I had to get another iconic one from the brand. I tried all of the perfumes there and this was the one that really blew me away. This is Cypress by Flores. My goodness, this perfume is beautiful. I've heard good things about this perfume. Oh my God. When I was reading the notes, none of those notes stood out to me because this is just a perfect concoction and nothing is overpowering. It's just a very beautiful blend. This perfume has neroli, citrus, rose, ylang ylang, vanilla, and musk. And yes, oh, this is so beautiful. You know what? I'm going to a wedding this December. It's so very far away, but I already can imagine myself in the middle of summer, suit and tie. Oh, what a dream to wear this perfume in that kind of occasion. It's very bright and happy and fun, but you know, it's very posh. It's very British. It's, it's very upscale. It's very... It's confident, it's, you know, I'm a man of stature, a man of probably a certain money, definitely probably old money, but my God, this is beautiful. Oh, I've tried the other iconic perfumes in there. Some of the ones that I could remember were the Turnbull something 17 over 17, is that what it is? And then the Elite, there, there were many actually that I tried, uh, even the Neroli Voyager. But this was the one that really captured me because this is, oh God, this is special occasion. This is like you're attending an event in the Buckingham Palace Gardens and you're mingling with the Royals. This is the kind of perfumes that you would wear when you're in that sort of like occasion. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful perfume, honestly. This one is from Obvious Parfums and this is Un Pistache. Initially, I wanted to get the Un Figue because obviously I'm obsessed with figs. But then I saw this lone bottle of their pistachio perfume and I thought, what a coincidence. This must be for me. This is the only pistachio perfume left. There were a couple of Fleur d'Oranger there were Unjos, there were a bottle of Scoville, um, and there was even one bottle left of Unvani, which I tried, it was okay. Um, but this was the pistachio perfumes that was recently released, not very long ago, I think, last year? Or two years ago. When did the pistachio uh, craze came in? Was it two years ago? But yeah. And I tried it. Ugh. And I feel in love. I feel in love. I feel in love. I feel in love. <laughs> mm. Let me read the notes. This perfume apparently has cardamom, 
carrot, pistachio, heliotrope, and musk. In the room, it smelled really nutty to me, but the carrot right now to my nose is standing out more. And this perfume, by the way, was created by Fanny Bell. She has created some of very iconic perfumes. Apparently, she created Autumn Vibes from Maison Margiela, which I love. L'Antardie by Givenchy, um, and also Bad Boy Le Parfum. Now, and a little note, I was actually planning on going next weekend to Libertine's actual boutique in Paddington because I wanted to buy, <laughs> I wanted to buy a bottle of Ingenious Ginger to bring to Bangkok with me because I'm traveling to Bangkok very soon. And because that's, that's what I do. That's what I, that's as a perfume enthusiast, I want, I want to bring a perfume whenever I travel so that I can associate that scent with a happy memory, a time and a place, you know? That's what I did with some of my perfumes already. And this one I think would be very beautiful in the summer heat, in the heat of Southeast Asia, in the heat of Bangkok, in the heat of Thailand. Let's see. I might have to delay Ingenious Ginger because I think I've already found my travel perfume for Bangkok. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh. And that is it for today's video. I had fun, I had fun. It was quite an experience doing this whole, uh, doing this warehouse sale and picking out perfumes to buy. It was, to be honest, it was overwhelming. It was overwhelming because obviously everybody has sprayed whatever perfume they could find in there already. All the notes in the world have already taken over the room. This makes me excited, to be honest. Apparently, last year's warehouse sale wasn't that exciting based on the comments um, from everyone who's been there. But hopefully next year, I'm, I'm hopeful for better things to see next year's edition of the warehouse sale. But definitely, as a perfume enthusiast, this is fun this is exciting this it's always exciting discovering new perfumes but anyways this has been a long video already thank you so much for all your support i hope you continue supporting this channel but as always wherever you are i hope you're staying safe stay curious and i'll see you on the next one bye